In this video, I want to share with you seven false beliefs that are being promoted by the Jehovah's Witnesses in hopes that it will make you more prepared to defend what you believe as a Christian the next time a Jehovah's Witness comes knocking at your door. That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you want a free ebook, click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so most of us have had this experience at some point in our lives. You're sitting at home, you're not doing anything, and all of a sudden you hear someone knocking on your door and you're like, okay, so you get up, you go to the door, and it is a Jehovah's Witness standing there, and they start sharing what they believe. They may even give you a track or something to the Watchtower Society, and if you're not careful, after that conversation, you're just kind of confused because what they're saying comes from the Bible and sounds like it's making sense, and now you're more confused about your faith than you were before you opened the door. So here are seven false beliefs that you need to be ready for the next time a Jehovah's Witness comes knocking at your door. And hopefully the next time that happens, you will be more prepared. False belief number one is this idea that God only has one name, hence the name Jehovah's Witnesses. But we can understand from scripture that this is not a proper belief because the Bible uses many words or names to describe God one of which is Elohim or El Shaddai. Uh, another is Lord or in the Hebrew Adonai. Uh, sometimes he's referred to as Father or Our Father in the Lord's Prayer or Creator and whatnot. And so this idea that God has to be referenced by one name, Jehovah and one name only, is just simply not supported in scripture. Now the second false belief that Jehovah's Witnesses subscribe to is this idea that the Trinity is not biblical because the word Trinity does not show up in the Bible. Now, in order to save time in this particular video, I'm not gonna go into the entire teaching on the Trinity because I have an entire other video that's about 10 minutes long that goes into all sorts of depth, uses a lot more scriptures than we have time for in this video. So if you're not quite sure how to explain the Trinity, I want to encourage you to go look at that video. I'm gonna put a link in the description, put a card somewhere up or on the screen, but here is the idea. Number one, the concept of the Trinity is based on three truths. First of all, there is only one God. Truth number two, God exists as three persons eternally. Truth number three, each person is God. Now, I know that's very hard for us to understand and comprehend. That's why I have a whole nother video. Check that out because you want to be prepared the next time a Jehovah's Witness suggests that this idea of the Trinity is not biblical. Okay, the third false belief that Jehovah's Witnesses teach is this idea that Jesus Christ was a created archangel, Michael, before the world began. But once again, this is not consistent with what the scriptures say because Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 leads us to the conclusion that Jesus created everything. So if Jesus was the creator, then how could he also be something or someone who was created? Notice what it says here, for by him, that's Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth. Now here it is, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. So if Jesus was the creator of all, of course, under the father's domain, then how could he also have been a created being? Now, along those same lines, Jehovah's Witnesses will also suggest that Jesus Christ was a mere human being and was not actually God. But the Bible says in John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Let me repeat that. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God. Now also in Colossians chapter two, verse nine, it says, for in him, in Jesus, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And so basically Jehovah's Witnesses will say that, you know what, Jesus was just a man or he was something else, but he wasn't fully God. 
But that's not what the scriptures say. Scriptures say the entire sum total of everything that makes up the Godhead was dwelling in bodily form in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But not only just looking at what the scriptures say, look at what Jesus did. No mere man can raise the dead. No mere man can, can uh, still the storms and calm the sea and heal the sick and, and, and give, blind, uh, give sight to the blind and all of these different things and uh, um, walk on water and feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. The very acts and works of Jesus prove that he is indeed God and not just simply a man. Okay, the fourth false belief that Jehovah's Witnesses will teach is this idea that Jesus' resurrection was more of a spiritual resurrection, but not a physical resurrection that occurred in a real, actual, physical body. But once again, this is not consistent with what the scriptures say. As a matter of fact, on several occasions, it says that after Jesus rose from the dead, he was eating food. It says that in Luke chapter 24, verse 30. Now, you can't eat food unless you have a physical body. But not only that, there were a few occasions where his disciples and some of the other females reached out to touch him, to actually take hold of his physical body. We see that also in Matthew chapter 28, verse 9, where it says, And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. If his resurrection was not a physical resurrection in a physical body, then my friends, then they would not actually have been able to physically touch him. But not only that, um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 that after he rose from the dead, he spent 40 days on earth, actually says in Acts chapter 1, giving convincing proofs. Now, during the 40 days, it says that he was seen by over 500 people at one time. And so if this was just more of a spiritual resurrection, then how is it that all 500 of these people saw some sort of ghost or had a hallucination or something like that? Once again, this claim is not consistent with the scriptures. The fifth false belief that Jehovah's Witnesses will promote is this idea that the Holy Spirit is not God, but rather he is an impersonal force. Now, once again, I've got another teaching that goes into extreme death. I think it's a live stream that I did. It's like an hour and a half long that talks about the, the, uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to put a link to that in the description, put a card somewhere on the screen. You can watch that and it'll give you everything that you ever wanted to know about the Holy Spirit. But in essence, the, the proof that we know that the Holy Spirit is indeed God and not just some force is because of how the Bible describes the Holy Spirit. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. How can you grieve a force? You can't grieve a force. You can only grieve a person. It says in the book of Acts chapter 5 that uh, Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit. You can't lie to a force. You can only lie to a person. It also says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, that the Holy Spirit distributes the spiritual gifts as he wills. In other words, he makes decisions. So forces don't make decisions. Decisions are made for forces, but a person makes a decision. Also, over and over again in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is not referred to as an it. So if you're a Christian, you keep referring to the Holy Spirit as an it, then you need to switch because the Holy Spirit is a person and we need to refer to him as he, as the scriptures do. Okay, the sixth false belief that Jehovah's Witnesses will teach is that hell is not a place of eternal suffering, but rather it's a place where people will experience suffering for a time and then they will be annihilated or eliminated, if you will. Now, to be fair, Jehovah's Witnesses are not the only group that promote this. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists also promote this as well, although I do believe that they are Christian, but this is a false belief because once again, if you look at Luke chapter 16, it is very clear here, and by the way, that's not a parable, that is a story because Jesus never used proper names in parables. When you look at the story of Lazarus and the rich man, you'll see that this rich man who went to hell was experiencing torments. He was burning up in flames. He had, the, uh, he had his memory. He was able to remember that his brothers were still on earth and he wanted them to not experience the same torment that he was experiencing. And so, 
The Bible also describes hell as a place where the worm does not die or that fire cannot be quenched. And so if a little worm, which is the smallest insect that we have, doesn't die, then my friend, you and I aren't going to die up eventually, uh, excuse me, burn up eventually and simply cease to exist. Now the seventh false belief that Jehovah's Witnesses will teach is this idea that only 144,000 anointed believers are going to go to heaven. Now, to be clear on this position, what they believe is that basically there's two groups of redeemed souls. There are 144,000 anointed souls, and these will be the special group of people that are one day going to ascend into heaven and reign and rule with Christ. But then the rest of the sheep or the rest of the believers will simply have to exist in a earth or a paradise, but they won't be able to ascend to be able to go to heaven. Now, this is wrong on many different levels. Number one, because the Bible says that in terms of reigning and ruling with Christ, it's not gonna happen in heaven. It's going to happen on earth whenever God creates a new heaven and a new earth, and Jesus is going to reign and rule with his believers for a thousand years during the millennial reign, which is described in Revelation chapter 20. But that's not happening in heaven. That's actually happening in earth. The second reason, which I talked about this before, is that the 144,000 people in the book of Revelation, I believe, are 12,000 Hebrew uh, believers that are living during the time of the tribulation that God is going to protect and seal and enable them to share their faith with other people so that more people can come to Christ. Not only this, nowhere in the Bible does the Bible make some distinction between there being a special group of believers that are going to go to heaven and then the rest of us are going to just have to be here on earth. No, the Bible says that the believers the body of Christ, the church is going to be married or united to Jesus Christ throughout all time. And every single believer is going to have equal access in terms of uh, their relationship and status with Jesus Christ. So my friend, these seven false beliefs that I talked about in this video are by no means the only differences between Jehovah's Witness beliefs and Christianity. These are just a few to get you started. I may come back around sometime later and do a second follow-up video, but many of you have been asking about Jehovah's Witnesses and what they believe and how we can better prepare ourselves to share our faith with them. Hopefully the scriptures that I provided in this video, as well as the links to some of my other videos will be enough to equip you to be able to share your faith the next time a Jehovah's Witness comes knocking on your door. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.